You're an artist. Actually, Jesse, it's just basic ingredients. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist, a master educator, and I try to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like the content, like, share, subscribe, share it along. It helps me with the algorithm. It helps me grow. It helps with, I don't know. It's just helpful. So, you know, help a fella out. And, uh, yeah, thank you. First of all, you need to cut that long shit that you got dripping and all that, all that shit, you know, to cut it down like my size or something, you know. Don't you cuss on this here radio. You know, there are those folks that we put up on a pedestal for one reason or another. Maybe they've accomplished something great in their life or they've done something political or they've done something athletic or whatever. They were like, whoa, that person is the coolest uh, the greatest, uh, you know, we idolize them. And, uh, you know, oftentimes they say don't meet your heroes because of that letdown that's possible. Now, there are some artists that fit into that category. There are some artists that accomplish some really, really great things, but they kind of have a darker side to their person. So here's a list of 11 artists, famous artists, that have a bit of a dark side. Edgar Degas was a very well-known realist artist who many associate with as an impressionist, even though he was not, but was very friendly with them, and his work is admired to this day. However, Edgar Degas definitely had a darker side to him. He was a racist and anti-Semite who made up stories on a French army captain in order to get him convicted of selling national secrets. He did this because this man was Jewish, and he developed this anti-Semitic opinion, I guess. In his later years, he refused to work with Jewish people. He had personally attacked Camille Pizarro for his Jewish faith, even though he was very much a leader surrounding the Impressionist movement, and even attacked a model who he had discovered was Jewish after the project had already started. He believed that women were animals and were only sources of his voyeuristic desires and Mary Cassatt, who was a huge supporter of women's suffrage and women's rights, was completely fed up with it and completely severed ties with Degas. When he died in 1917, he was abandoned by most of his friends. It's discussion that thrills yeah. me, that, yeah. that enthuses me, mm. that pumps me up. Edward and Josephine Hopper were very influential as painters in their own right, although Edward Hopper very much was at center stage. They got married a little bit later in life. He was almost 42 and she 41 when they got married and they would stay married for 43 years. Although their relationship very much had a dark side. There's a lot of he said, she said in this one, but they would get into violent arguments and Edward was thought that he would go out and have an affair. So Joe insisted that she be his only model. There was a lot of mutual domestic violence going back and forth. He was very egotistical and sexually abusive. He felt that she was inadequate as a wife and she loved the cat more than she was willing to satisfy him. Hopper would belittle and degrade his wife where she was detached and quite verbally abusive towards him. And she would give up her art career so that his could flourish. She was too talkative, too energetic, and way too determined for him. This would cause her to lose her friends, her art, her joy, her creativity, and she would be completely devoted to him in complete misery. I'll take good care of you. I'm your number one fan. 
Emil Nolde was a prominent German expressionist artist who was a cornerstone of modern art, and although he was looked down upon by his home country of Germany and even labeled as a degenerate artist in 1937, he would toe the line as a Nazi supporter. 1,052 of his works were confiscated by the Nazis and Adolf Hitler would place 27 of his artworks in the Degenerate Art Show. Yet, Nolde would state, The Fuhrer is great and noble in his aspirations and a genius man of action. Which is not how most people think of Adolf Hitler. Although his country would look down upon him and the art that he created, he would stay politically aligned with them and very much had anti-Semitic behaviors and beliefs, even though that particular political alignment very much looked down upon him. Well, I can only speculate as to the reasons why. The power couple of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo are perhaps Mexico's greatest power couple of all time. Rivera is arguably the greatest muralist of all time, where Frida Kahlo is very much recognized for her surrealistic paintings that are very, very popular to this day. But this marriage very much had a dark side about it. Diego was just starting the end of his second marriage when he met Frida Kahlo. After two years of knowing each other, they would get married when he was 42 and she was 22. But the honeymoon did not last very long for this power couple. Both had extramarital affairs on one another. Diego was a notorious womanizer who fathered at least two illegitimate children with two women while they were married, and many of the models that he had would become consumed by his lust. He was a compulsive liar who claimed that he had practiced cannibalism. But Frida was not without her faults as well. She also had several extramarital affairs with several prominent individuals, including men and women around the world, including Nicholas Murray, Georgia O'Keeffe, Josephine Baker, Paulette Goddard, and even the Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky. That one really was an affair that was difficult for Diego to take in, but when Diego had an affair with Frida's sister, that also stung a little bit. After 10 years of marriage, the two would get divorced in 1939. However, that was not the end. They ended up having some sort of reconcile that would result in them getting remarried less than a year after their divorce, and they would remain together in complete dysfunction until Frida's death in 1954. <laughs> To Frida! To Frida! There are many individuals that are friends of the modern artist Balthus, but what some don't recognize also is his dark side. Many of the subject matters in his paintings are about the sexualizing of young girls and his sexual exploitation, speculations of pedophilia, and underage eroticism don't sit well with much of the public. In 1936, Therese Blanchard was painted by him over 10 times and was paid very well for her modeling. Although she was only 11 years old at the time, her mother worked at a restaurant where he would go and spotted the young girl. And he took advantage of his impoverished friend and created some quite inappropriate paintings of these adolescent girls, including her. Some of the claims against him are unproven, however, there are those that have their opinions of the artist's work and the subject matter that he would create. I want to smash it! Paul Gauguin is a very well-noted post-impressionist who brought the area of symbolism to prominence in that post-impressionistic time. He was one that many looked up to, including Vincent Van Gogh, whom he lived with for a very short period of time. His work is highly known and respected, and it is somewhat common knowledge that he went from being a stockbroker into the art scene, transitioning from a hobby to a professional. However, he very much had a dark side about him. When he transitioned from a hobbyist to a professional, he would leave his wife and five children so that he could run around and do his own thing. 
It is known that she was a physically abused individual, and he would use his high connections in Paris to fund his trip to Tahiti. In Tahiti, at the age of 43, he was on the look for some companionship. This is a country where bigamy was legal, and he took on three child brides during his time there. Two 14-year-olds and a 13-year-old would become the wives of Gauguin, and all three were given the gift of syphilis, including many others that he had affairs with, and this was a time that there was no cure for syphilis, and so it was uncured. He fathered several children without being involved at all in their lives and is known as an arrogant and patronizing pedophile who took advantage of women and young girls and oftentimes would compare himself to Jesus Christ through belief and his own artwork. Hey, say that once more, I'll smash your bloody face in. Perhaps one of the more famous artists with the dark side is Pablo Picasso. He would revolutionize art through his blue period into his rose period and, of course, cubism and surrealism, on and on and on. But the guy was a misogynist. He had many young girls that were models as prepubescents, although there is no documentation stating that he had any inappropriate relationships with those prepubescent girls. The grown women in his life weren't quite so lucky. He was only married twice, but had multiple affairs, had several children that resulted from these affairs, and he basically came right out and said that women were sexual objects to him. They were a means to an end for his art and his sexual appetite. When he was done with them, he threw them out like garbage, which drove two of these women to suicide. His last wife, who he married at 27 when he was 79, was one of those sad statistical individuals. Out of jealousy, he would lock women in his apartment, basically holding them kidnapped, and it is known that he slept with hundreds of women who he treated like trash. Some of these women even required psychological treatment after their relationships with Picasso. If you denounce me to the police, you will also be exposed and humiliated. I'll see to that report. Richard Dodd was a Victorian era artist that many look up to. However, he very much had a dark side about him. At the age of 26, he killed his father and fled to Paris, where he attacked and attempted to slit the throat of another traveler. He would be arrested with a list of individuals that he had wanted to kill. It was discovered that he was suffering from a mental illness and placed into a mental hospital for the rest of his life. Although I do have compassion for those that are suffering from mental illness, I don't think it provides a good excuse for committing crimes as violent as these that we see in the dark side of Richard Dodd. The heat has made you powerful. Jackson Pollock, the abstract expressionist, is very much revered as one of the greatest American artists of all time. However, Jackson Pollock definitely had a dark side. He was an individual that had nervous breakdowns and a lot of mental illness was prevalent in his character. He struggled with depression and would go into alcoholic rages that resulted in him being in and out of treatment, including psychotherapy, and it's presumed that he may have had borderline schizophrenia. It's almost as though he preferred to live in a fog of his own self-destruction. He had gotten into an affair and was very much cheating on his wife, Lee Krasner, as she was growing to more and more popularity as an artist in her own right. She was traveling in Paris and he had gone to a party with two women, one of which was his mistress. Leaving the party, the women got into his car as he was driving drunk down the road. As he passes out, careens off the road, smashing his car, which resulted in his and the other passenger's death. The only survivor, his mistress, had very little remorse for anything that had occurred. If he had died of a, a liver disease, uh, it would not have been as glamorous. Him dying in an automobile accident became almost a James Dean Camus kind of mythology. That helped the romance of the great artist, the romantic artist, not to live it out, to die too 
young before you become old hat, you see. So uh, it also created a value structure because the paintings before that, oh, he must have sold blue poles for $3,000. And now it's priceless. But when it was sold to the Australian government, it was 2.6 million or something. Now, if he were alive, that would never have happened. But he was the first one who started the ball rolling in getting those kind of prices. So the art market was created out of Jackson Pollock's tragedy. Michelangelo Caravaggio was a Baroque master who would revolutionize art through his uses of curioscuro and was very much looked up to for his skills in art. However, he very much had a dark side. He fought and drank and there are many examples of unruly and violent behavior that he was involved with. He was reprimanded for fighting other artists, wounding a soldier, throwing a plate of artichokes at a waiter, ripping the stones out of the cobblestone road to throw at the police, shooting guns in town, smashing the window out of a landlord who locked him out of his house because he failed to pay rent for six months. He attacked a notary with a hatchet because he was a little too into his prostitute girlfriend. He assaulted a judge, broke out of prison, he killed at least two people in 1527 at the sacking of Rome. He killed a police officer who killed his brother. He killed a witness that saw him committing a crime so that he would not testify against him in court. Another person was crippled so they would not testify him in court. And he was involved in a tennis match that escalated in violence where he actually committed a murder there. He was definitely a skilled artist, but he was not someone you would want to be associated with. He's the bad guy. Benvenuto Cellini was perhaps one of the greatest and most talented sculptors of the Renaissance behind some of the most known names. However, of the famous artists with the dark side, perhaps his is the darkest. He was remembered as a very dangerous psychopath. He was known for killing at least three rival artists, including a goldsmith who he thought was trying to get business away from him. He was one who survived war. He was imprisoned. He was poisoned. He had syphilis. He survived the plague. He would be arrested several times for sexual assaults of various types. And only one of those received a guilty plea on his part, where he was sentenced to house arrest, where he would write his memoirs of murder and lust. The Renaissance was a very violent time, and it is said that he would take part in his first murder during a riot. And he enjoyed it so much, he just couldn't stop doing it. Friends, I hope you appreciated that list of famous artists with a dark side. And remember, you know, we're all human. We all err, and uh, we all live and learn, and we all grow, and I've made my fair share of mistakes. You have to give each other a little bit of grace out there, and you have yourselves a wonderful day. Can I be honest with you? I don't care.